living water that only he can give from everlasting springs that won't run dry living water you'll never thirst again the water's free just one drink and you will never die
Father, in the name of Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, we come right now, Father, blessing your holy name, thanking you for your word, thanking for you for your promises, God, which are yea and amen. There is no variableness, no turning in you, and you are God. You are always the same. And I thank you, God, that you are one who keeps promises, and I honor your name today. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen. And amen. I have entitled this uh, message this morning, Forever and Everland. Forever and Everland. Reminds you of something, doesn't it? And here's how I opened it. Most of you, if you're 
uh, my age or, or older or even maybe younger may know exactly what I'm talking about. Most of us can remember sitting around our living rooms waiting for the Walt Disney program to come on on Sunday night at 7 o'clock. How many know, remember that? There was innocence, an unencumbered joy about listening to Jiminy Cricket open the show singing, If You Wish Upon a Star. Now, I'm not saying everything Disney did is wonderful. Don't bother to come to me later, I know. But Jiminy Cricket singing, If You Wish Upon a Star. I remember it still to this day, just as clear as a bell. And seeing the fireworks over the Disney castle. We remember Peter Pan and Never Never Land. And then life became real. And the joys of a long, young life, free from the worries of day-to-day -day living, were over. The, the, they call it an end of innocence. Time in your life where you suddenly realize that the fantasy of your young life isn't the same as the reality that's going on around you. How many bemoan the loss of those days sometimes? It was such a great thing to just be an innocent child, listening to programs and like that, and, and just being in your own little world and, and not having to deal with finances and deal with problems and deal with world situations and deal with any of these things. And I, I pray that your young growing up was like that and was good. Uh, if it was not, then God can change that also. Somebody say amen. Over the years, it was easy, though, after life became real, to become disillusioned and even discouraged about living in a world where there's so much hate and strife and evil. But I'm here to tell you today that for the Christian, there is still a hope that evil or trouble or hate can never take away. It is a hope based not in the naivete of youth, but settled firmly in the promises of a holy God. Our hope is the blessed hope. One day we will be with him. Not a fantasy land, but in heaven. Not pretending, but in reality. Somebody say amen. And I wanted today, I, what I wanted to do, and I pray that the Spirit of the Lord will help me, is to just bring a joy over your spirit today. You know, sometimes we, we deal with, you know, struggles and trouble, and there, there's all this wars and hatred, and, and we talk about, you know, end times and all of the things that will occur in it, and, and those things are all real also. But there is a reality in God for hope and joy that is settled in the person of Jesus Christ that no man can take away, no devil of hell can take away, no circumstance can take away, no negative situation can take away. Our hope is in Him. He is the blessed hope, and the blessed hope of God is a doctrine that is not often taught anymore in the church. The blessed hope is the hope, meaning the earnest expectation that we will be with Him forever and ever. Hallelujah. And the difficulties of life will be over. And the blessings of God will be for eternity. We won't have to wish upon a star. We have the blessings of God, which are yea and amen. They are found in the holy word of God. This is our handbook for living. Amen. You know, I just wanted to be joyful today. Is that all right? Praise God. Just wanted to love God and be thankful and be, be joyful in Jesus. I almost said happy. But you know, happiness depends on happenings. Joy is settled deep within your spirit. It's a gift from God to those who love the Lord. It's something that transcends even the most difficult situations of life. It's something that you and I need to recapture at times, don't we? Need to meditate upon the goodness of the Lord. Need to be joyful in God. Need to be thankful, not just always dealing with problems or situations, but saying, thank you, God. For a wonderful day. Thank you, God, for your blessings which are, are coming my way. Thank you, Lord, that you have me in your mind. Hallelujah. Jesus said in John 14, 1 through 3, Let not your heart be troubled. Believe, you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions or rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. 
I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. That is the blessed hope for the Christian, that we have it settled in our hearts, in our spirit, that nothing this world can do to us can take us from the hands of our loving God and from our Savior. Amen? Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And the Word tells us in Numbers 23 and 19, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the Son of Man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? The NIV says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a Son of Man that he would change his mind. Does he speak and not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? God keeps his promises. Amen? He is a covenant maker, not a covenant breaker. He's a God who keeps his promises, who makes wonderful promises to us and says to you, you will be with me forever and ever. Pillars in the temple of our God. Not pillars that uphold, but pillars that are there for ornamental purpose. They are there to be shown off by God throughout eternity. And that's who you are if you are a Christian. God will show you off throughout the cosmos saying, these are mine. Hallelujah. These are mine. You are his. Amen. What a wonderful thing to meditate upon in the word of God. You know, it's very easy to be caught up only in the things that are happening all around us and forget the great promise of God to not only save us, but to bring us to himself and to bless us. I don't know about you, but I need to dwell more on the joy that God gives, on the fact that he has and will bless me and mine as we serve him. I think it's so easy to get caught up in what's going on in the world and to allow that darkness to just kind of envelop us. But what God wants for the Christian is for us to very really be able to see the light of God in the midst of the very darkness of this world. In the darkest place, God is still on the throne of heaven and he is able to help you and I. He is able to take us from the miry clay of sin and put our feet on a rock, Christ Jesus, on the rock, Christ Jesus. Amen? He is able to save us. He is able to bless us. He is preparing a place for us. And can you imagine a place that, that God, and the Bible says actually that we cannot really imagine those things that God has prepared for us, for those who love him, I hath not seen, nor has the ear heard, neither has it even entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those that love him. God says, you can't even imagine what I'm doing for you. You can't even imagine what I'm making ready. Oh, praise God. What a wonderful thought that we can't even imagine in, in your wildest imagination the wonderful things of God that he is preparing for us so that we might be with him in the joy and the bliss of eternity. Praise God. I mean, needed that this morning. Thank you, Jesus. In the midst of the dark, he is God. He is God. And his light shines among men through the person of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Never get discouraged. Look to him, the author and the finisher of our faith, that he might shine his light into your life. Maybe darkness has been trying to envelop you lately. Maybe you've said, you know, I just, I can't make it anymore. Well, praise God, you're in the right place. Because what happens is when you finally give up and give in and let go and let God, then he has the opportunity to do the work that only he can do. Because you will find that you cannot do the work that is necessary in your life. Only Jesus can do it. Only Jesus can do it. And when he does it, my friends, your heart is just filled with joy and the shalom of God. There is a peace that comes from God that the Bible says passes the understanding of men. It means you and I can't really understand that type of a peace because often we allow the things that are happening to dictate our life for that day. 
Don't get caught. If that's where you're at, then what's happening is the devil manipulates circumstances and situation around you to control you. Because if your hope is in only the things that happen every day around you, then that's easily manipulated. But God, but God is able to do so much more than we could ever ask or think. He is the God who lifts us up. He is the God who loves us. Even in our worst, he loves us. Doesn't mean God wants you to be at your worst. He wants you to be at your best, which is when you give up and give in to God. When you say again, my Lord, my Lord, I love you with all my heart, my soul, my strength, and I am yours. God, I am by myself a sinner and a failure. But in you, I am a child of the most high God. I am one who will be around the throne of heaven singing with the choir of the angel band. Hallelujah. And I'm not talking about Daryl and Brenda. I'm talking about the angel band of heaven. Amen. That glorious choir which is around the throne of God. Can you imagine the music there? Can you imagine the things that, that you will see there? No, you can't. But you can try. And the things that bring you joy still far, fall short of the blessings of God which await you as a child of God. I think sometimes we get so far away from this that it, it almost becomes hard to serve the Lord. It almost becomes a drudgery to serve God. And that's not what God wants. God wants you, your heart to be lifted up and joyful. He doesn't want you to be foolish or, or not understand the uh, schemes that the enemy has or any of that. God wants us to be mature, amen. We're not children anymore. But God wants us to understand that maturity also brings with it, if you are a child of God, faith and belief in God. Trust in the Lord. The Bible says, trust in the Lord and lean not onto your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he will direct thy paths, Proverbs 3 and 5. Heaven is real, my friends. I want to say that again. Heaven is real. And God has promised it to those who are faithful to him. Jesus said that he's preparing a place that we will share with him for eternity. This place is not fantasy, not the musings of a youthful heart, but is settled in the person and in the promise of Almighty God. And as we've already read, God does not lie. Amen? God doesn't lie. He's not a man that he should lie. Watch out for men. They lie. And I don't mean just males. For mankind, men lie, women lie, but God does not lie. Amen. He is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should turn away and repent. Because God, there is no sin in God, and he doesn't break his promises. People will break their promises to you. If you didn't know that, I'm sorry to tell you that this morning, but that's true. People will break their promises to you, but God in heaven never breaks a promise. Amen? There has never been a promise that God has broken. There has never been something that God said, I will do this, where he has failed to do it. And so when Jesus says, I'm going to prepare a place, that's what he's doing. He is getting that place ready for you and I. And I'm thankful for that this morning. Today, I've decided to have a joyful day. Have you ever done that? Just said, you know what? I'm going to have a joyful day. I'm going to enjoy the Lord today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be blessed in the Lord. I'm going to just think on the good things of God. I'm not going to worry that, that sometimes there's more month at the end of the money. I'm not going to worry that there's situations that I can't control around me. I'm not going to worry about past failures. I'm not going to worry about any of the things. I'm not going to worry about that the whole world seems to be going to hell in a handbasket. I'm not going to worry about all of the trials and the troubles that have been behind me. Today, I am going to be joyful in the Lord. It's a decision that we sometimes need to make. Just to say, God, give me a joyful day in you. Give me a day of wonder and bliss. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? Then, then you can go back to reality, if that's what you call reality. Yes.
we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. He was singing today about rejoicing, and I didn't call him and say sing about rejoicing today. But that's, I think, something that slips away so easily from us. Is anybody with me today? It slips away so easily, and difficulty comes rushing in. But because of God, if we will make the decision... And I'm not talking about being foolish or unaware. But if we will make a decision to just allow God's joy be settled in our spirit and say thank you, God, for it. You don't have to say a whole lot more than that. Sometimes people talk God to death. You know, not, not really. You can't kill God. I, mean, I know my doctrines. and you know, well, But I wonder, you know, sometimes we try to explain it all to him. He knows. He knows. He knows you better than you know you. And God's desire for you and I is joy. Even in the midst of trouble, even in the midst of struggle, even in the midst of, of difficulty, He is still God. Amen. And so that's what I've decided for my day. So don't ruin my day, all right? Don't <laughs> let, let me just have a day where I can be in bliss today. And it's just enjoy the Lord. And I pray that this will cause you to think on what I'm saying today and that you will also enjoy your day in the Lord. And then you can worry about other things later if that's what you want to do. But I'm starting to say, you know what, God? I have found that I don't have the power to change a whole lot. The things that I do have the power to change, I'll work on it. The things that I have no control over, I'm just going to leave it to you, God. Because I've found that worrying my little head about it doesn't really change very much. I've realized that I'm not very powerful at all. Have you ever found that out? A lot of people walk around and they think they're something, all that in a bag of chips. You know, but they're not. God is in control. God is the author and finisher of our faith. Even though this world seems like it's running headlong in the wrong direction, which oftentimes it is, there is still the church of God present in this world. There are still good people who love Jesus. We may not be perfect people, but we love Jesus. And, you know, it's time for the church to settle in, its, in their hearts that God's promises are yea and amen, that he will do what he has said he will do. And that even though I can't understand how it, it can all work out, God will work it out for me. And there's a settledness that can come in your spirit and in your heart when you believe that. There is a joy. There is a peace that passes man's knowledge who are in the flesh. Moses, in recounting the receiving of the Ten Commandments, exhorted the Israelites he said in Deuteronomy 10, 14 through 21, Behold the heaven, and the heaven of heavens is the Lord's, thy God, the earth also, with all that therein is. Only the Lord had a delight in thy fathers to love them, and he chose their seed after them, even you above all people, as it is this day. Circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart, and be no more stiff-necked. I think some of us could take that lesson. So don't be stiff-necked. Amen? Allow God to deal with you. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty and a terrible, which regardeth not persons, nor taketh reward. It means you can't bribe God. You don't bribe God. God, I'll be good if, you know, I, I tried that as a young boy. It didn't work well, you know. I still got in trouble because of things I did. I thought if I could just do what I wanted and then say, but I'll be good, God, tomorrow. If, you know, God didn't take any bribes. He does execute the judgment of the fatherless and the widow, and he loves the stranger in giving him food and clothing. Love ye, therefore, the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God. Him shalt thou serve, and to him shalt thou cleave. And swear by his name, he is thy praise. And he is thy God that hath done for thee these great and awesome things which thine eyes have seen. You know, we are grafted in to covenant. 
So much of the church does not understand that. We are grafted in. We are followers of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he is our God. And this, now I'm not talking about replacement theology. The church doesn't replace physical Israel. But we are grafted in as uh, God praisers, as spiritual Jews in that sense. Those who will praise the Almighty and those who honor Him. So when God makes promises of blessing to those who serve Him and we are grafted into the covenant, those promises and blessings are for us also. They are for us also. And God will again deal with Israel. How many know it? He hasn't forgotten His people. He's going to call them back to Himself. But in the meantime, God has given to you and I the ministry of reconciliation. He has given to you and I the great promises that he gave to his people Israel, which many of them rejected. Don't reject God. He hasn't rejected you. God loves you. God has been reaching into your life. How many t uh, would, would stand here today and say, I know for a fact and without a shadow of a doubt that God has actually saved my life at one time or another? Yeah, many of us, many of us. I'll never forget putting a 1969 Mercury Grand Marquis into a pond, drunk. That wasn't last week. That was some time ago. And I never forget waking up when the car left the road at 60, 70 miles an hour jumped a four-foot ditch and went down through the cornfield and into the pond. When I used to drink, I never woke up when I passed out for hours. And yet my God, who loved me, made sure that Tim Boley didn't drown in the muck of a local pond down on Maple Hill Road in Castleton, New York, because he had a plan for me, and he was watching over me. Even when I was rejecting him. Even when I thought that I could just do things my own way. And yet his hand was there. So many times that we say, God, well, where were you when? I'll tell you where he was, right there. There is, the, there, there is a law of reciprocity. What you sow, so shall you reap. You know, don't think you can just do anything you want and then reap blessing all the time. You do things which are wrong and sinful and against the ways of God, and guess what? You'll reap from that. And yet God so many times reaches into our life and says, you know what, I know this should be real bad for you, but I've decided to maybe let you off and let you out. And I woke up, and I remember climbing out of the car. I couldn't open the door and climbing out and seaweed, like, over my shoulders, cattails maybe. I don't know what it was. And walking up onto the road, and my friend pulling up and going, Bowley, what did you do? I know you've heard it, many of you, before, but I thank God for his salvation. I thank God for his hand upon me, even when I rejected him. How much more as his child should I take joy in him? And remembering his good works and his, his faithfulness and his forgiveness toward me. How about you? Do you know the forgiveness of God in your life? If he has spared your life, you probably, many of you, have a testimony like mine. Others might just remember as you were going down the road and somebody crossed the road and it should have been a head-on and yet God put an angel between and shifted the cars. So many different things that God does. I remember a time come with a little Dodge Dart and had a trailer in the back and Cindy Lee and all the kids in the car. And we come up over a hill over near, past Peck's Lake, going, leaving the lake, going down toward home. Come up over the hill in the Adirondacks. And just as I came over the knoll of the hill at about 50, 55 miles an hour, there, was, there were two cars parked right there talking to each other in the road. And there was no time. You, I, I, I couldn't stop. So I said, Jesus, and I whipped the wheel once this way and once like this. And if anybody here has ever towed a trailer, the small ones are the worst because they do this. Larger trailer will steady out pretty quickly. Small ones are all over the place. I made two turns of the wheel, one like that, one like that. Went right between the car and the guardrail. And I, to this day, I do not believe there was enough, enough width 
for that car and trailer to go through, and yet somehow we did. We passed through, and on the other side of it, I looked at Cindy Lee, and she looked at me, and it was like, that was God. And I pulled over and just sat there like this. I knew we were all dead. We come over that hill, and it was too late. But my God was there in the car with me. He was with us. And this crazy man doing this and this doesn't do it. Running down the thruway toward Bible college in an old station wagon stacked on the top with mattresses and things on top, bicycles on top. We look like the Beverly Hillbillies. Running down the highway, going all the way to Louisiana. Shouldn't have driven that car to New Baltimore, let alone Louisiana. Going down the New York State Thruway at 65 or whatever the speed limit is there. And a truck went by and a tire blew on the tractor and trailer and it caught on fire. And pieces were just going everywhere. And I started doing this with that U-Haul trailer behind us, swerving and big chunks of stuff flying over the car. I got all done. I pulled into the new Baltimore service area and a guy pulled up behind me, stepped out and he said, young man, that was a bit of driving. And I said, no, my God was with me. I don't know how we ever did it. But I'm going to tell you that God loves you, that he wants you to take joy in him, that he wants you to understand how many times he has reached into your life. You could stand here and give testimony after testimony about what God has done for you, things that maybe you've never told anyone. You can say to him, God, I know you were there when I was foolish and young. Maybe you're foolish and older, I don't know. But when, when I was foolish, God, you were there. God makes promises and he keeps them. He declares and he makes good. He's a covenant maker, as we've said, not a covenant breaker. We are grafted into these promises. They are yea and amen to us. Psalm 136, 26 says, Oh, give thanks unto the God of heaven, for his mercy endures forever. Isaiah 37 and 16 says, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, that dwellest between the cherubim, thou art the God, even thou alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth. Thou hast made heaven and earth. You know, and I said it this morning as we were in praise, I said, sometimes I wonder, do we realize really who we are in relationship with? Or do we take for granted there needs to be a greater reverence in our lives for God? A greater understanding of... And, not, and, and when I say fear the Lord, I don't mean the, like the type of fear you're afraid of, scared. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about an awesome reverence for God and who he is. The Bible tells us don't fear the devil who can, who can kill the body or feel, fear those who can kill the body, but fear God who can cast both body and soul into hell. Fear God. It means trust God. Come to him. Understand his love for you. Say yes to it. Why would we say no? If you were in poverty and someone came up with a roll of bills and said, here, I'd like you to have this. No, no. I don't want it. You say, well, then maybe I have pride. No, you have stupidity. If somebody, if somebody comes up with a roll of bills and they said, I want you to have this because I believe you need it and you're in poverty and you say, no, I don't want it. You're just plain dumb. Send them my way. I get away with this too, not only here but by television. Yeah. Because you know what I'm saying is true. God reaches out with this great love for us, and so many people cross their arms and say, I don't need it. Don't want it. Won't have it. Duh. <laughs> I mean, God is reaching out to you saying, I want to give you blessing and love and eternal salvation, and, uh, and I've done all the work for you already. Would you like to have it? And we say no. We wonder why that, that uh, somebody might say that's not smart. But I don't believe in God. Well, maybe he doesn't believe in you. You know, if God didn't believe in you, you would cease to exist. You know that? You think that's crazy what I'm saying? That's absolutely true. 
Bible says by the word of God, the earth and all these things are kept in store. They are kept in place. They exist because God desires that they exist. If God ever didn't believe in you, meaning that you were, you would not be. So people go, I don't believe in God. Well, <laughs> I don't believe in 90 mile an hour wind either, but if I step out in it, I'm going to know the effect of it. Sooner or later, we're in the age of grace. Sooner or later, those who spurn God will answer to him. But now it's time to come to him, to say, God, I love you like you love me, God, I, or I want to. Show me, God, what a wonderful God you are. And in the midst of all that, he's gracious and merciful to us. We don't deserve it, but, he's, but he knows we're just children, and he's, he's merciful to us. Just like you don't, every time your child does something wrong, you don't you know, tie them up and throw them in the back room somewhere. Well, you better not be, or else don't tell me, because they were mandated report. No, <laughs> they, you know, we we need to come to God and to His love, and and rejoice in Him. And I'm closing. Isaiah sixty six one through two. Thus saith the Lord. This is what God says. The heaven is my throne. And the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you would build me? God doesn't need our buildings. Somebody say amen. He dwells within. It's not wrong to have a building. But God doesn't need a building to house him. There is no building that could house God. Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things has my hand made. God says, I made it. And those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, means God will look steadfastly upon, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. God's not impressed with our big buildings or our great bank accounts that we have made for him or our crystal cathedrals or our stained glass windows. They can all be beautiful and may even have a place if they're not ostentatious. Beauty, there's nothing wrong with beauty. Guess what? God's the author of that. If you don't think so, step out this door and look around. God has created beauty. Nothing wrong with mankind making things that are beautiful. See, we, people major in the minors and minor in the majors. They get off on this stuff, and then, it, then all of a sudden you can't have any church. You can't do anything. If you, then that's sinful. No, what, it is, what it's about, you know, is money. You can't have money because, oh, that's sinful. Money is the root of all evil. No, the Bible says that the love of money is the root of all evil. Have money, but don't let money have you. That's really what God expects. Some he may make rich, and if he does, pour it into the kingdom of God. Why would the church struggle, and yet at times it does? There are so many who are rich in the goods of this world that could just make all the difference in what we have or don't have. But we don't worry about that. God is the one who supplies. Amen? Amen? See, there's a way, there's a balance to Christianity. There's a way to think about things to be as God is. And God says that he looks on those who are poor. And when he says poor here, it isn't really as much financial as it means poor in spirit, meaning they, they are humbled before God. And of a contrite spirit, a spirit that quickly runs to God and says, God, I've sinned against you. Forgive me. And he says, in a person who trembles at his word, who takes the word of God and understands the gravity of it, the weightedness of it, the importance of it, who understands that God is a joy giver and that he calls us to himself. What a wonderful God. What a glorious God. Would you give him a hand clap of praise today? And will you bow your hearts with me, please? Heavenly Father, there is none like you.
we honor and adore your name. We thank you, God, for the blessing of being together in your house today. We thank you for the provision of the table as we prepare to fellowship one with another. As we understand the, the truth of the word of God, we say thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for me that I haven't said thank you for before. Thank you, God, for it. Thank you for this beautiful and wonderful day. It doesn't have to be sunshiny to be a beautiful day. God, you give rain. But I thank you for this day and the sunshine and the blessing and the peace and the joy that you alone give. I thank you for the blessed hope that trust God that I will someday, we will someday be with you and that all the cares of this life will be over. And we will look upon you face to face. My God, I honor and adore you. I thank you, Father. I reverence your name. And bless you, Father, from here below. And so I honor the name of the Lord Jesus Christ because of his work at Calvary's cross and his great love for us, that he gave his life that I might live that all who would call upon his name might have forgiveness of sin and newness of life. I pray, God, that your word today would go just like an arrow right into our hearts, that through the Holy Spirit, the Ruach of God, you would speak truth today that maybe we've heard in words before but never understood. Let today be the day of salvation. Let today be the day that truth enters our heart. Let today be the day that we rejoice in you truly, God, in setting all cares aside. Let us give you the praise and the adoration and the glory that you rightly deserve. So I pray all these things in the mighty, the matchless, the holy name of Jesus Christ, my Lord. Everyone said amen. Step into the water, wait a little bit deeper, wet your feet in the water of his love. Step into the water, wait a little bit deeper, come join angels singing praises to the Lamb of God. It's time we the people stand up for what is right, it's time we square our shoulders back to raise our swords to fight. For the Bible is our weapon, and the Spirit is our shield. The church needs more of its members to be workers in the field. So step into the water, way out a little bit deeper. Wet your feet in the water of this love. Step into the water, way out a little bit deeper. Come join angels singing praises to the land. Let's go. 
me far away Lead me back to you Everlasting springs that won't run dry 